Welcome to Osprey TV. It is an absolute pleasure today to have Amy Goff uh, on the podcast with us. Amy is the founder and manage, managing director of Wanderlust Communications, which is a social media and digital marketing uh, consultancy that specializes in tourism and consumer brands. Amy, welcome to Osprey TV. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Um, Lovely to meet you. Thanks for coming in. It's the first time that we've ever met, so I'm really excited about learning about um, you and, and also your business. So let's kick off with a little bit about you. Can you tell us about yourself? Yes, yeah, so my name's Amy. I moved to Australia about eight years ago, um, straight to Kalgoorlie, actually. So I went yep. straight to the Outback. Wow, that's a, that's a real uh, <laughs> baptism of fire, isn't it? Was. It was. It was definitely a change. We moved from England in the um, very start of January. So it was so cold, pipes were bursting, there were feet of snow everywhere and landed in Kalgoorlie where it was about 42 degrees. Wow. So it was a pretty um, a pretty big change for us. Um, my husband's a geologist, so he got um, work out in Kalgoorlie. So we decided to come for a bit of an adventure. Fantastic. So that's hence Kalgoorlie because rocks, right? It's <laughs> yeah. a good place for gold. him to go. Gold. <laughs> Lots gold. of gold. Excellent. Um, yeah, so I'd previously worked in PR and social media back in England. I did a yep. degree in PR and then worked for a large supermarket in their press office to begin with. And then I worked for a social media agency, which at the time, kind of 10 years ago, was one of the first of its kind in um, England. Yep. We work with a couple of big brands. Um, probably the one that's most recognised over here is Sony Ericsson. Yep. So we were their agency for all of their social media and kind of digital outreach to bloggers and all that kind of stuff, which at the time was pretty new. Yes. Um, so when we left England to move to Kalgoorlie, I kind of thought that would be the end of my social media career. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I'd been looking at jobs pre uh, before we moved. Um and there was just not really any kind of marketing roles in Kalgoorlie at all. Okay. Um, and it was kind of like it was meant to be when we arrived. Uh, the big recreation centre that was actually hiring for a marketing person. So I went for that job and was very lucky to get it. So you went from Sony Ericsson <laughs> to Kalgoorlie Recreation Centre. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah, so it was a bit the of a difference. clientele must be exactly the same. Yeah, <laughs> definitely different budgets, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but you know it was really cool like it was a really nice way to actually get to know a lot of the local people and made some amazing friends like it, it was such a lovely way to actually introduce us to Australia because and we met so many amazing people yeah. um, and you know a lot of their digital stuff hadn't really well they didn't really have a social media presence or um, much kind of well, any digital marketing at all, really. So it was actually a chance for me to start things from scratch and really kind of bring across my experience to that um, market, which was really fun. So I did that role for about 18 months and then um, a role at the visitor centre actually became available for a general manager. So I went for that role. I was actually encouraged by my manager at the time to go for that position, which was really nice, uh, and got it, which was a bit of a awesome. shock. <laughs> um I'd never really done some of the elements of a general manager's role before. So things like budgets and the HR side of thing, I hadn't actually really had much experience with. Yeah. But it was more of the marketing side of things that they were keen to develop. Yeah. And all so that other stuff you can just learn on site, right? That's it. It was definitely a, a steep learning curve. The first yeah. 12 months were, were quite um, interesting, especially somewhere like Kalgoorlie. Um, there were a few people that kind of thought, what's a, an English girl yeah, know about selling, Kalgoorlie? Selling, like, how is she going to sell this place? Um, but I think hopefully over the time I was there, I managed to, you know, change people's opinions a bit of what we could do and think about ways of promoting the region that sometimes an external person yeah, I was gonna say that a different view on the place. That fresh set of eyes there. could make a massive difference and, and really work to your advantage. Yeah. So I think that role um, really helped me get a bigger sense of the kind of running a business, I suppose, um, but also an introduction to the tourism industry. Yep. Um, we'd worked with a couple of tourism clients in England, Stena Line, which is like a cruising company, mm -hmm. um, and Co-op Travel, which is a travel agent. But this was kind of my first experience doing destination marketing. Yep. Um, and as part of that role, I worked closely with Australia's Golden Outback, the regional tourism organisation, and yep. then Tourism WA as well. So that was kind of my introduction to the tourism industry, yep. which I just loved. You loved it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. What's not to love about promoting? Yeah. That's WA, right. really. It's yeah. an, an amazing place. Um, so I had that role for about three years and then I actually went on maternity leave when I had my first child. Yep. So I took um, about nine months off and I was kind of considering what I wanted to do after, you know, going back to work. And I wasn't keen to go back full time to that kind of management role just because there was a lot of issues with staffing and you know, yeah. HR, things like that, that required you to go in on weekends sometimes. And yeah. I just didn't really want to go back to that role full time. 
And I also knew that it was our plan to move to Perth Mm -hmm. in the coming months. And somebody had actually stepped up in my role um, as an acting position, but she was doing such an amazing job. I kind of felt a bit guilty to go back when I didn't really have the intentions to stay there. So I decided to take the plunge um, and set up my own agency. So I thought this was a good time to try and pull together all of my skills and experience over the last kind of 10 years working in digital Mm -hmm. and PR, but also in tourism. Um, so Australia's Golden Outback were actually looking for some digital marketing support at the time. So I kind of went to them and asked if they wanted to be my first client and the rest is history oh, really. Fantastic. So, um, so a little bit of hustle and you've and here you are. A little bit, yeah. So that was that's four years ago now. We we did move to Perth shortly after and then there was just so much um Word of mouth, really, just, just between knowing a few people in the industry. Yeah. Um, we were just getting recommended by other clients and through people that we knew. Um, Obviously offering good service and, uh, and you know, word of mouth, it's almost the best form of advertising, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, we, yeah, things grew pretty quickly and I started employing, well, working with kind of subcontractors to begin with who would mm. help me with different elements of the, the business. Um, I had another child two years later. So um, again, I took kind of a slight step back and I had three people working for me that kind of kept everything Rolling. ticking over, yeah. but we didn't take on any new projects or didn't do any new business. And then the last 12 months since I came back from maternity leave, things have kind of shifted gear. I took a lot of time while I was, I mean, I wasn't really away. I think maternity leave when you've got your own business doesn't really happen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so I was still very much involved, um, but it, I did take some time to think about where I wanted the business to go um, and made the decision to move a lot more towards actually creating a team. So having a team of employees rather than working with contractors, yep. I really wanted to actually build a team um, and p- kind of put some roots down. So we actually got an office um, and we all work together from that office. There's now three of us in the team pretty much full time. Um, so we're able to offer a lot more services to a lot more of our clients. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, and, we, and there's just been a big growth in the kind of projects and the clients that we've taken on board recently. So that's fantastic. Yeah, it's been awesome. Really good. You mentioned that there's nothing better than um, trying to sell the Australian outback. What is it about your role that got you hooked in and that you really love? Um, I think I've always loved communication so when I was going to uni I was trying to decide between PR or journalism I've always liked the kind of storytelling side of of marketing I suppose Um, and I think destination marketing is just something that's you can be so creative and it's so cool to try and actually bring out those stories of a destination or the experiences and the people Um, and that's kind of what we try and do is actually bring places to life so it's such a crowded market obviously everybody is now taking gorgeous images of gorgeous places um but I think what we try and do is work with the really standout images and videos and content but back that up with a story so yeah you know what does it feel like who can you meet what can you do what can you see um and I think combining those two things is actually really powerful yeah so are you relying on um well I mean is there a bit of uh the the user-generated content in terms of providing the imagery and and leveraging the stories that their, their comments or the or the text that's connected with that image um, tells you or are you sort of looking at the, the image and saying okay that's um you know that might be broom or something like that and then you guys just put your own copy in there and and, and do the work to explain whatever it is you might want to using the image from from a photographer yeah i mean it, it sometimes works <laughs> in different ways I suppose it depends what the content is and what the caption is yep. so with most clients we'll always start with a strategy so you know what what actually is the story we're trying to tell here what are the strategic pillars you know are we talking about events or experiences or ocean what you know what are our actual key pillars that we're trying to um trying to communicate with our audience yep. so then with most of our clients we usually work on kind of a 70 30 split 70 percent user generated content and 30 yep. percent owned content okay so to fulfill that strategy and ensure that we actually have the content that we really, really need, we will create that ourselves so that make sure we, it actually completely yep. fits the bill and we yep. know that we can build our campaigns around that. But we are also looking for user-generated content because A, there's so much of it around yeah. now. Sometimes there's no point reinventing the wheel. Um, you know, we also don't have unlimited budgets for That's a lot right. of our clients. So actually using that user-generated content is a really nice way to be more cost-effective. Um But really it is because most of those images are actually attached to a story. So it's somebody else's experience of a place. 
is often something that you may not have, th- not have even thought yeah. about or it would really bring to life one of the elements that we're trying to communicate in a yeah. really authentic way. Um, so it gives people kind of a behind the scenes or a first person feel, feel for a destination yeah. or an experience. And, and what is a typical client for you guys? Who, who reaches out to you and, and what are they seeking and how do you service what they need? So predominantly our clients are tourism based. So we work with Australia's Golden Outback still, our first client. Um, and they're a regional tourism organisation. So they promote from the Gascoigne Murchison through the Wheat Belt, the Goldfields and down to Esperance. So it's pretty much a very, very huge chunk of WA. Yep. We also work with operators. Um, so there's a company called Sal Salis, who are an eco retreat based up on the Ningaloo Reef. Yep. They're owned by Journey Beyond now. And yeah, we just learned about them yeah. with Tori in the other day. So it was, Tori. It was great. Um, and they have another business called Darwin Harbour Cruises, which we also work for. Um, a couple of other operators and local tourism organisations and then also a couple of consumer brands. So that's slightly yep. different um, scope. But most of our clients really want the strategic digital marketing support so we'll work with them to put together a digital strategy that's going to complement or you know be cohesive with their existing marketing strategy okay um and then really that most of the time includes everything all the implementation so probably the average package i suppose for a client would be creating a strategy um that would include a content marketing element so looking at what they already have and looking at the content that we might need to create so images videos obviously in all the formats for instagram feed facebook feed stories um igtv so many all many different um formats now yeah and different sizes which is always a challenge um but also things like blog posts and itineraries so that we can actually lead people to something that's really useful so they don't just see a beautiful picture of esperance they actually um they can click through to something more exactly is it go all the way through to to booking tours and stuff like Um, that the regional tourism organizations don't they don't operate as a booking agent they would then direct you to the we we would direct people to the members themselves to book um but people the operators like sal salis and darwin harbour cruises yes that does they can get a sale on their website people can book directly so again it depends with who we're actually working with um so yeah that created all those different kind of bits of content blogs itineraries um and yeah images video then also copywriting so yeah copywriting all the captions all the monitoring engagement um so kind of everything that fantastic that it's, it's like a one-stop social. shop isn't it yeah yeah we do try and offer that and a big part of what we do also is the paid element so obviously social really now isn't you kind of do have to pay to play with a lot of the yeah. a lot of the social media channels. So in, to- in terms of getting in really good engagement, is that, what you're, is that yeah. what you're talking about? I mean, especially if you're a smaller a smaller brand or a smaller business, Australia's Golden Outback has got you know fifty thousand followers now, so we do get a pretty good yep. o- organic reach. But we do put a lot of emphasis on the paid side of social as well, yep. um, and just trying to be a bit more strategic with that as well, I suppose now. So really working about you know being very targeted with who is our target market and how can we, you know, reach them in the right place, but also thinking about taking them on that journey. So we know that the customer journey, you know, goes from dreaming um, to planning, to booking, to experiencing. Yeah. So we try and kind of follow them through that journey. So the first thing they might see from us um, would be something that's going to raise awareness of the brand. So perhaps a, a video, you know, showcasing the region. Um, and then people who've watched that video or watched most of that video would then get served perhaps one of our existing posts that's yep. a bit more engaging and they can see that we've got that really engaged community with lots of comments and sharing um, information. Then serving them things like blog posts are the top five places to have yep. dinner in Esperance or the, the best places to see the wildflowers in the wheat belt. Yep. Um, and then you know following up with itineraries and things like that. So actually yep. trying to really take the people who are interested on a journey rather yep. than advertising to everybody and just going for reach we're actually really yep. trying to make sure we're communicating the right messages to the right people at the right time have you have you with i guess this is a bit of an analytical question have you sort of felt out how many impressions you need to put in front of somebody before you get that that click through or that engagement is it because we get fed so much content yeah is it is it more and more and more um that you need um, to get something in front of someone i think if you're trying to get a sale Definitely. I think if you're trying to actually make someone make a purchase, uh, we would normally suggest, I mean, a campaign of like three or six months to yeah. actually start to really build up enough awareness with somebody. But I think the statistic is something like between seven and nine times before yeah. you'll actually take an action on, uh, a, on an ad. Yeah. Um, it depends what your objective is, though, because if we're going for, um, say, engagement on a post, 
you can get that the first time round as yeah. long as you're serving the right kind of post to the right kind of person at the right time. At yeah. the right time, they're usually quite keen. And, and our community, especially for Australia's Golden Outback, we've really, really focused on who we've been trying to attract to the page and we are very very up on responding to comments and asking questions and answering questions so people do engage with that page a lot because they kind of they actually share stories with each other yeah. quite often we'll post a picture of a certain location and it just and goes off on its own tangent start doesn't it posting their own pictures of being there so yeah. it's a really it is a highly engaged account yeah um so that makes us getting more engagement much easier because mm. there's so much social proof Going there. On, yeah. um, but, you know, we work with a couple of other clients uh, in the consumer space and trying to sell product. And that's much, much more difficult yeah. trying to get people to actually Buy, become sorry. familiar enough with yep. the product. Um, and I think that's where we really always advise about having that holistic approach so that yeah. they do need to be seeing things offline as well. You know, it does need a traditional marketing campaign yeah. or samples or um, getting it in front of them and compounding that with a digital activation. But yeah. it's very hard to encourage people yeah. to buy something online. So I've always wondered behind the scenes how you talked about responding, you're very engaged in responding to comments and stuff like that. Is that something collectively the team does? Or is it sort of one person in charge of comments? Because what if you're responding and then someone else responds at the same time? How do you avoid that? Um, so we all, yeah, we all have our own accounts kind of thing. So yeah. um, Isabel and Danica both work with me and we kind of split the accounts. So they both look after a couple of oh, accounts okay, yep. each. Sometimes the tasks are shared in terms of Isabel might look after advertising and Danica will do more of the organic content. Yep. But we all know who responds to what which comments. Okay, so cool. each person sorted. is responsible for a certain client. And then we have things in place where if somebody's gone on holiday or even over the weekends, we will share responsibility coverage, because yeah. I don't really feel like it's fair if oh, you know, course, poor yeah. Danica's responding to comments like yeah. 24-7 or oh, on, on a weekend. Bali, yeah. <laughs> so we always just make sure that we have got things in place to make sure that yep. it's covered so people will always get a response. But yeah, not responding. Yeah, not double responding. Yeah. Awesome. Um, um, what are some of the challenges that you face in your role and, and with your business that you that you find, um, you know, maybe uh, sort of disrupts your, the flow of the business on a day-to-day -day basis? Is there anything that sort of sticks out in, in this sort of industry? Um, I mean, on a personal level for me, it's probably balancing my family. Yeah. So I've got two small children, two and five, and... Um, just balancing that with work is tricky because yep. the reason I started working for myself was because I didn't want to be working full time. Yeah. So I try and do three or four days a week at the moment, but my eldest has just started kindy. So those days now finish at like half two when he finishes yeah, school. Right. Yeah. So that's just been another thing that's changed my routine, I suppose. So there's that constant shift of trying to get that balance right yeah. and ensuring that I'm not you know, working every evening or that I'm not missing time with them, yep. but also dedicated enough time to work that I don't feel like clients are being neglected or I'm missing yeah. things. It's a, it's a, <laughs> so a I, real I mean, everybody it. has that problem. Yeah. And I think I'm extremely lucky to be in a position where I'm making my own schedule and I can make those decisions myself. So I'm not definitely not complaining, but that yep. is a challenge for me personally. Um, I suppose the other thing that makes it difficult is the the, how fast the channels change and the algorithm changing or yep. um, the way that just the functionality of things changes so we might use a scheduling software for example and the way that that works will just suddenly change overnight or you'll lose access to be able to post yeah. to Instagram silly things like that I suppose that day-to-day -day frustrating frustrating yeah um, and I suppose just the you know, social can sometimes be a bit of a negative place. I think yep. when you're hanging out on Twitter too much or um, even certain comments that you'll get on certain posts, yeah. you do, it can be a little bit uh, depressing sometimes. Yeah, there's some um, people <laughs> some not very out nice there, people out there. Yeah. To be honest, we don't get much of that because of the industry that we're in. Um, but definitely sometimes Not very often it someone does. goes, oh, that's the worst pink flower I've ever seen in my <laughs> yeah. life. Yeah, but I definitely do feel sometimes when I get home, I'm like, I don't even want to go on yeah. Facebook. Like, I'm over social media Looking or you can at get the a screen yeah exactly but they're probably the biggest challenges that we face i would say yeah so that's all the bad things what about the good things about your job what are what has been some of your most memorable experiences so far um god there's been so many um well we can talk for hours i don't mind <laughs> I think being able to travel is has been amazing so having clients that are all over australia or all over western australia um has meant that I've been able to travel to a lot of different places to go and see those clients or to experience them for myself. So that's been incredible. We used to work with a company down south called Walk Into Luxury and they do hiking tours and then you kind of stay at the most beautiful luxury accommodation and go for beautiful meals in Margaret River. So it's kind of like walking for a lazy person, I suppose, like me, where they 
drop you off at the starting point and then they pick you up and take you for dinner um but I got to go and do that for three days and like really get to know the cape to cape track and see some places that I'd never been to before um also working in Kalgoorlie you know as much as it was a shock we we just got to experience some things that I don't know we would have done if we hadn't oh, moved straight there, you know, You've like going gone into to a mining town that also specialises in prostitution. How can that possibly be boring? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. I never didn't even know what a skimpy was before I moved oh, there. Oh. But then I'm welcome to Australia. Yeah, no. <laughs> so I'm, we're, we're well versed <laughs> in skimpies <laughs> and uh, the brothels now. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, the brothel tour is certainly an experience is if there? anybody wants to go and do something authentic in Kalgoorlie. Yeah. Um, but just things like going to Lake Ballard, which is about an hour and a half out of Kalgoorlie, and camping there. That's something I probably would have never done I don't Mm. think if we'd have moved straight to Perth how did you um deal with the heat would have been a big change hey was it yeah a lot of a lot of air con yeah staying inside (laughs) in fact when we first moved there we made a few errors with the heat we we saw a few signs saying that it was Australia day yeah and we'd never even heard of Australia day so we were like oh there's a barbecue and it'll be a chance to go meet people and it was about a half an hour walk from our little unit that we were in so we set off walking at about 11 o'clock and it was already about 40 degrees walked all the way there and got there and there was nothing there because obviously it's an Australia Day barbecue breakfast yeah. we, uh, we didn't know so we got there there was nobody there not a thing <laughs> we were both absolutely we'd taken about this much cooked, water yeah. cooked bright red yeah nothing was open there were no people around and just walked all the way back just like what are we doing where are we like what is Welcome going to on Australia. <laughs> yeah but um yeah a lot of air con a lot of inside yeah. Inside you acclimatise fairly quickly, don't you? We yeah. do, yeah. yeah and it was, it. do you know what, like I said, some of the stuff that we got to see and do was just brilliant. And a lot of the people in Kalgoorlie are in the same boat, like they're away from their friends and family. Yeah. So we got that really close group of friends and just a, a really lovely community. And oh, that's great. Going to places like Lake Ballard and Togolia and down to Esperance, which mm-hmm. was kind of our local beach, a four hour drive. Yep. Um, it was amazing. Like it was just, it just felt like an adventure to us. It was awesome. just really cool to be seeing a different country and yeah, experiencing different things. Did you find any gold? My husband did. He did for work. Oh, <laughs> didn't get to keep God. any. He's got no one no. in the pocket, one for work. <laughs> no, no, not worth it. Not okay. Worth it. Well, we're going to jump into the first image that you brought okay. through. Um, wow, this is. I still can't believe this is real I know. for a start and also here in australia it blows my mind every time i've seen i've seen, obviously seen lots of images from this place but it's still breathtaking every time can you tell us about this photo why you brought it in and, and what it means to you and also do you know who took it yes i do know who took it so we this was as part of our project with australia's golden outback we were looking at creating some new content so as i say we often work um with videographers and photographers to create stuff yep um And also we are kind of firm believers that the photographers deserve to get paid. So I know I was talking about user-generated, but we will only ever use user-generated if that's something that the photographer is actually happy with. Because I'm not a big believer in you can get some exposure because people can't survive on exposure. Exposure dollars. Um, So we actually worked with Jared Seng to get this content. So this is Lake Hillier, um, which is on an island actually off the coast of Esperance. So you can only get there by scenic flight or by a very long boat trip. They actually do do boat trips um, uh, probably once a year. You can get an all-day boat trip that goes out there. And it's just one of those locations, like you said, it's just not, can't even believe it's real. It just looks so surreal and it's always so popular on social media, like especially internationally. Like for Australia's Golden Outback, we do really focus on intrastate marketing. We let Tourism WA and Tourism Australia do the international stuff um but in terms of our content when we are creating stuff we're actually always thinking about things that that the um state and national tourism boards can use as well yeah because obviously that helps our exposure um but yeah this just you can't get a bad picture of lake hillier really so jared went up in the plane and got these shots for us um and yeah, it's just a out of this world kind it of really image. Is, it? it always gets a lot of a- attention and just one of those things that's different, you know, like we're always trying to find the, the bits of the location or the destination that are going to get people talking and are something yeah. that they have to go see and they have to experience. Yeah. Um, and I think a pink lake has got to be pretty right. high up there on most people's list. Yeah, absolutely. Anything <laughs> in pink is always popular. Yeah. It, it's just the the stillness of it, of the lake itself. It doesn't, it just looks like it's cgi or computer generated yeah. it reminds me of ice cream it's just it's really yeah it blows me away every every single time and jared singh we've, we've chatted about him before and we're encouraging him to come on the podcast but he's a great guy an incredible creative how did you find working with him 
Um, brilliant. Yeah, he's yeah. really good. I think the, the the important thing that we found with working with different photographers and videographers um, is the ability to actually create something that's true to the brief, I suppose. And yep. sometimes where that falls down is the edit. So it will be the pulling together of the video or yep. getting the final selection of images that's just then takes a really long time to get that to the place where you want it to be. Whereas Jared's just so good at understanding a brief um, and delivering exactly what you want. You know, yep. created a lot of video for us as well that was all um, just spot on. And just a genuinely nice guy who's passionate, especially yeah. about WA because he's from here. Yep. Um, yeah, and always a quick turnaround <laughs> with yeah. Jared. And I think the, the other thing is that I find he's always evolving his style. Yeah. So you follow him yeah. on Instagram and, you know, you look at his different... St- different styles of shoot and his story even his stories and things like that like it's yep. always changing i think he's always it's, pushing the boundaries yeah. yeah so it feels like he's not just replicating what he's done for another destination i really yep. feel like it's something that's unique and it, he can capture that feel yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah he's a special dude obviously you're deeply entrenched in social media what what do you think is the importance of social media in society at the moment and and uh how do you think it affects the fabric of everyday life for us <laughs> that's a big that's question. pretty deep isn't it <laughs> Oh, do you know what? I think social media is like the best of times and the worst of times. Yeah. It's, you know, sometimes I do despair of like what what goes on on social media. And I think especially for young people, like I'm so glad it was not around Skip when I was that. a teenager. Honestly, I am so, so glad about that. Yeah, but imagine um, what it's going to be like for our kids. I know, but I... I always talk about this with my husband because I sometimes, as I am, like you said, in it all the time and just even like all the influencers and all the people who think, I don't know, just so many people kind of taking up space, I suppose, yeah. when they perhaps don't have anything that useful to say. Which um, <laughs> <laughs> probably sounds a bit harsh. Um, so for all you fake influencers out there, <laughs> not Amy's the not ones. a fan. No, I suppose it's just, there's, I think there's so much time spent on vanity yeah just so that you look good to someone else and it's not true and that time could be spent doing something so much more worthwhile and instilling that you know that feeling that vision how you look or the the image you're presenting is the most important thing and I think that's the opposite of how I would want my kids to feel um but we always talk about this at home and my husband thinks that the youth now are kind of the guinea pigs. Like yep. it's all changing so fast and they yeah. are really overexposed. But he thinks in the next kind of 10 years... It'll just die down. The, the, our kids will almost hate it. They'll yep. think it's really yeah. awful that we all laid everything bare and gave all of our data and yeah. did all those things, which is, you know, could be the truth and I hope it yeah, is. And there's definitely some merit in that. It could it could just flip 100% and... Yeah, and people, they'll just think, I don't want everybody yeah. knowing everything you about me. And post a photo of you every day? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I also think it's a place where a lot of people can connect. They can, you know, if they're perhaps feeling isolated or don't have those real connections, they can meet people online and have that connection. There's a lot of, you know, so many resources out there, so much information. Um, And also as someone who lives away from all of their family, for me, it's a way to still feel like I'm really involved in in people's lives back home. I can see what they're up to and I see people changing and people having kids and kids growing up and where people are going on holiday and their accomplishments. And that's really nice because I think if I didn't have that, I would feel really... Isolated. cut off and yeah. I would I probably wouldn't have moved actually if that would have been the case if That's I couldn't right. whatsapp my family every day and send them videos and yeah it would be a completely different experience yeah. I also think it's a huge source of inspiration in a, a lot of different facets like if somebody was to see this image for instance that might be the catalyst for them to go right I need to get a job I need to save my money because I want to go there you know like yeah. there's so many variations of inspiration that 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 is positive about social media. So yeah, and I, like, I think as much as that. Oh, sorry, I didn't. No, you're, to no, you're right. You. Just, I like to think of the the nice things about it, I guess, and not dwell on all those horrible Definitely. things that we see as well. And there are really good sides to it. You know, this it's been used for so many good causes and like raising awareness for things or raising money. And yeah. as you say, even just to help you with your daily life, like you yeah. said, trying to inspire someone to go to a destination they used to just see an ad in a newspaper and the, yeah, that's it was right. so limited, whereas now they can get other people's opinions, other people's reviews. They can yep. hear it from people who've been there and done it, yeah. and find information that's going to help them. They can price match. They can, you know, it actually makes the consumer process amazing. Yeah, um, so much easier. And yeah, there's, I think it's what I try and practice is just not following people who make me feel bad. Like, so if someone, if you know, if accounts do make you feel bad about yourself or... Yeah, Aren't, delete. Yeah, just delete. Block. Don't follow it. Try and just follow people that yep. do inspire you and make you happy and make your life better rather than yep. making you feel bad. Mine's just full of cat memes. That's all I've got. <laughs> Whatever makes you just happy, right? Cats. <laughs> <laughs> um, for your business, what platform um, seems to be the most um, prevalent in terms of strength for advertising it or for 
uh, engagement? Is it Facebook or Instagram or do you, do you find there's a difference um, between the two? Probably, I would say it would depend on the content, to be honest. I feel yep. like Instagram still wins when you've got that really impressive visual because it is such a visual um, medium, but it's yep. becoming so cluttered, I suppose, now. But I feel like Instagram stories have actually been a big break yeah. away from that. So yep. we're able to get really good engagement through those stories and take people on a journey, which is really nice. Um, and also just the fact that you can use the swipe up to the website. Like I feel yep. that's actually a really nice function and it, it matches how people do browse and kind of engage. Yep. Um, so that's definitely been huge, huge for us. Um, what about IGTV? Do you, is, are you utilising that very much? We are, yeah, definitely. And we've actually seen when you post on IGTV, that performs so much better in your feed than oh. a normal post would do. Okay, so it like kind of fir- automatically goes in. So you get the first 60 seconds yeah. and then you watch more. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So we found that that's performing really well. The, the issue that we have with IGTV, to be honest, is that most of our clients' budgets aren't Don't designed allow. to be creating so much video all the time mm-hmm. um and also a few of our clients you know they don't want to be on camera all the time and yeah. it can just be a simple thing of someone actually just talking to camera but perhaps you know some of our clients may not want to be the face of their organization that's right yeah um so it comes down to content budget really and how we can try and create something Tailor that it. is useful or engaging because yeah. you don't want to just post something for the sake of it you want it to be something that is either going to inspire or make someone laugh or be engaging yeah so, um, it, yeah, it just comes back down to budget, I suppose, of people needing to put more aside to create content than they used to, like way more. And that once it's gone, it's gone. It's kind of yeah. like, right, what now? We need another one, we need another one. <laughs> it's insatiable, um, isn't it? It really? is. It's constant. And um, Facebook definitely still performs well for us. Um, it, when it, I suppose when we have something um, either really engaging so that people can actually have a conversation about it or something that we can help them with so again like itineraries or tips on where to get petrol when you're traveling remotely or yeah. um facts that people didn't know like things like that still perform really well for us and yeah. um, especially with a nice image uh, and having that kind of paid strategy in the background also really helps with that have you had any posts that have absolutely blown up like that you that you can think of that it just went completely viral um or, the, or your most engaged posts? What, what, I'd just be interested to know what it was. Like, was it a... It tends to be coastal stuff. Yep. Um, for one of our clients, for Sal Salis, it's the whale shark footage. So at Ningaloo Reef, you can swim with yep. the um, whale sharks and the humpback whales. We had a video of a humpback whale um, for Sal Salis and that just went crazy. And went crazy. And those natural experiences mm-hmm. always do get people. Have you got to go and try those products? Yes. What do you reckon? Very, very lucky. Um, Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Like the whale shark I did first and that was just, yeah, one of the best things I've ever done. They're really big, aren't they? Unbelievable. And just, they're just not bothered that you're there kind of thing. Like, um, it was just amazing. I think from someone from England, you know, you don't yep. see you don't get wild sharks <laughs> and lives like that. Um, the first time we went to Exmouth, actually, we went for Christmas, which was bad timing because it's boiling. But it yeah. was we got really lucky, and it was it was just the best trip. We went with my dad, who was visiting, um, and we saw turtles laying their eggs on the beach oh, wow. at night and snorkeling with little turtles and stuff. And we just were absolutely blown away. Like, felt like I was in a documentary. Yeah, felt like I was like David Attenborough should be there. I, didn't, I couldn't <laughs> just, believe it was real. Just commentating your holiday. <laughs> It was insane. And then a, um, a few months ago, I'd, we went and did the humpback, swi- uh, humpback swim. And I think, if anything, that probably blew me away more than the whale shark one. Yeah. Just because of the size of them. Like, yeah. You just... And I think with the whale sharks, you can kind of swim along with them and it feels quite relaxed. Whereas with the humpbacks, it's a bit more pressure of like, they're coming... Oh, sorry. You're right. Yeah, with the humpbacks, it's a bit more exciting and a bit more like, they're coming now, get your face in the water. Yeah. And is then they just come chance. by and... Yeah. Yeah, just the size of them. It's just, again, yeah. one of those things that you've looked at on TV or in books since I was a kid, you know, yeah. like being obsessed with dolphins yeah. and whales and stuff. And to actually see them is just out of this world. Yeah, yeah. just amazing. So lucky to um, be able to experience that very, on Very, very lucky. Step. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Can't believe the, the, the kind of breadth of experiences that you can have in WA alone is just unbelievable. Yeah, and yeah, I think that's what makes our state incredibly attractive to international visitors and, and and why so much of our content is so strong and, yeah. and feature quite heavily in like in the Australian Instagram page yeah. we, we get a lot of um, exposure on there WA I'm talking about yeah um, because yeah we have such a variety of of, of different landscapes yeah um, um, yeah I'm, I'm glad to live here that's for sure yeah uh, we're going to jump into the next bit of content that you brought through to us 
Now this is a video and uh, we will overlay this video through our little chat but we're going to hit play on it now so we can talk through it. What just before we do hit play, tell me about this video. Um, what is it, what is it about? Who shot it for you, and and how come you brought this one in? Um, so this was another piece of content for Australia's Golden Outback. One of the biggest attractions in terms of natural attractions in our region is the wildflower season. So last year we had an incredible season with kind of record numbers of flowers being spotted, and luckily we got the same again this year. Yep. Um, there's kind of a niche audience for wildflowers, and it just tends to be that older traveler like grey nomads who love them and a lot of photographers that love the macro element being able to take the close-up pictures Um, but it's also becoming more of a a broad interest for people and I think probably because of Instagram like getting those shots in the the carpets of wildflowers even the canola fields um, that's been in the news you know because people are trampling fields which they shouldn't be doing. Um, Always ask for permission. Yeah (laughs) but what we found last year we, we always do a campaign around wildflowers but last year we found that People were just always asking us, where was this? When was this? Because some sometimes these blooms will only last two weeks. Yeah. So if we were communicate, you know, if we were talking about wildflowers in Yalgu, for example, um, but we didn't, you know, we, we hadn't got any actual images right from that moment. Yeah. If people were traveling up there and they would say, oh, actually, there. they're gone, you know, they're not there yet. Mm. So what we wanted to do this year was actually create something that was really time sensitive. So we were in touch with all of the members kind of in the Northern Wheat Belt and the Gasco Murchison area, which is where you get these really, really outstanding carpet displays. Yep. Um, about what was coming into season and when so when we knew that there was a good few places that were actually in bloom we sent uh, a film crew so it was actually a guy from birdhouse media in perth um and we did him an itinerary of these are the places that you need to go to and off he went to capture the footage for us and it was under the strict brief that we need it turned around within two days so that we could post it and say this This was monday that was happening on monday and that's one Um, of the real strengths with social media is that instant um like proof of what's happening yeah. at that time whether it was yesterday or the or the day before that was um, it and we were able to pinpoint where these places exactly where these places yeah. were you know the visuals are so impressive and so beautiful that it yeah. got us that kind of organic reach that we needed um but we also put some spend behind this to make sure we we're reaching the right people over that really targeted amount of time so within that week we were yep. really trying to push it out to as many people as possible um and the response was amazing you know like obviously the video is beautiful and there's some amazing shots in there especially of the wreath flowers which are really really rare so yep. to go get those on camera was really special um but yeah just people saying i'm going you know i'm going to go this weekend if they're there like yeah. so it really did encourage that travel that's now so good, rather it? than like yeah. bucket list travel it was go do it now travel do it now. so um yeah we were just really happy with how it turned out and i mean it looks like a really simple video because it's only about 15 seconds long but that took two days of travel just because the spots were so far away from each other like yeah. the tribe <laughs> um you know he was on the road for two days getting all this different footage and sewing it together um so just so much work goes yeah. into creating something like that. And yep. we're so lucky that Australia's Golden Outback are willing to invest in that kind of production. Yeah. Um, but I think that's when you, when you get the value for money um, because the quality is good and it's really unique yeah. and it's really current. Yeah, that so, was it. It was kind of a nice mixture of something yep. that really appealed to the eye but also was really timely and important. Mm. And then we would link that. We did have a version of this video that had captions on which would talk about um, you know, the number of species and the fact that they were all blooming over WA right now. Yep. And then in the social captions, we were linking through to itineraries, road trips, you know, places to go, places to see right. along the way. So people could really get that. How do I go do this yep. now? Well, you, you really just like become the perfect tour guide for everyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was Online. talking to Tori and she, we're like, there's no need for the Lonely Planet anymore. We just throw that out there, out there and yeah. it's been superseded now. It kind of has, although the hard copy has for sure. They're definitely trying to do some stuff with their own social I think their own yep. website which is good but we actually had a conversation like that the other day we've kept all of our travel guides to where we've been and it feels a bit sad to throw yeah. them away but I was like we'll never open no, that even if around. we go back to that place yeah. we'll never open that book never. again <laughs> backpacking with this huge like one two kilo book in your bag yeah. the whole time it's a nightmare <laughs> yeah oh, that's awesome what do you think um the state of tourism's like in in WA and Australia um, as a whole, do you think we're doing a good job of encouraging interstate and international travellers here? Yeah, I think so. And there were some recent um, stats that came out about travel numbers to WA and they were insane, like insane um, increases. 
So I think we obviously, yeah, I think things are going well. And I think Tourism WA and Tourism Australia do a really good job. I mean, Tourism Australia, you can't really fault, to be honest. No, that's like true, their, yeah. their campaigns are amazing. Um, and Tourism WA now, I know, are focusing on the road trip state, which I think is actually a really good selling point for WA because so many people are exploring it themselves in a yep. car. It's a self-drive destination. And especially for Golden Outback, it's perfect because yeah, we that's are right. um, road trip country. You know, it's perfect for us. Um, I think in terms of things that could be improved or things that are missing for me personally, I always find the like indigenous experiences are still quite few and far between. And I would love to see more of that, like more options for people to be able to have a cultural experience. Um, It's such an amazing, amazing culture. And it's very rarely could you go and uh, yeah, like you said, experience it or, or, or spend some time with with the indigenous people yeah. and really learn about that culture it's a shame i feel like it's a shame because yeah. it's not um given the the amount of attention i think it really needs or deserves and i think the the research shows you know that about 80 percent of people coming to australia want to have that experience yeah. something like only 30 percent of them can have it i mean i've kind of paraphrase those stats yeah, that's <laughs> i right. need to check those yeah. and you might have to write it in the notes we can, we can just put some time um, up <laughs> yeah. and check um, stats. but yeah it's obviously something that a lot of travelers do want yeah um and i suppose the the other issue especially with more regional places is that bookable product as well so having things that people can actually come and experience yeah uh, you know that's actually a purchasable product for them as well so we can promote it easier yep. from an international point of view what are you um your thoughts on uluru and how that recently they obviously put a ban on people climbing that. How do you? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it should have happened straight away. Yeah. As soon as they the people said they had a problem with it, I think it should have happened. I I get why hikers and climbers want to go do that. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like if it's if it's that upsetting mm. and that insulting to the people who actually you know yeah. own that land. Um, and that it's so spiritual and special to them, I feel like it's quite disrespectful. It's not to as though you can like climb the pyramids. We can just go do it. No, yeah. if it was, yeah, I, I feel like it, I'm glad that that's happened, to yeah, be honest. Um, and I feel like it, yeah, should have just happened when yeah. they said <laughs> Have you been <laughs> out there? To. I haven't actually, I haven't been no, there I haven't. I would love to go. Yep. Um, that's definitely Australia's golden outback. It is. Well, not, not technically. Oh, well. But <laughs> yeah, I would love to go. I think I'll wait till my kids are a bit bigger yep. um, so that they can really. In, take enjoy it in I well. suppose and enjoy it especially as Aussies you know we need yep. to show them the, pr- the country properly and for them to be able to remember that and experience it yeah. I think, themselves yeah oh that's good um what do you think are our biggest draw cards for tourism here is in, in your opinion um I think the natural experiences so wildlife and just the natural landscapes are amazing um and so varied you can experience so many different you know, from cliffs to countryside to beaches all within, you know, within one place, which is amazing. Yep. Uh, I think the food and wine is awesome in Australia. I think that's always a really big pull for people. Uh, but I really think that it is the the people, like yep. the characters of Australia, you know, like that laid back vibe. And it's often something that people ask us at home, you know, like they say, oh, everyone says it's a nice lifestyle. What What is it? And it's really hard to put your finger on what it is, but I think it is just that everybody's that bit more laid back and friendly yep. and chilled. And, you know, the fact that your boss wants to leave at half four on a Friday to go for a surf, <laughs> that is so different than England where it's like the last one at the desk, basically. Yeah. Like everybody working as long as they can. And I think Going to that, work in the dark, coming home in the yeah, dark. Oh God, yeah, in winter. Um, but I think that is, it is the people that make it for me, I think. Yep. Like the, and it just makes the whole place feel so relaxed and, and fun to me. Yep. Did you watch Wolf Creek? Yes. <laughs> Do you think that did much for Australian <laughs> tourism? <laughs> No, <laughs> especially not when we lived in Kalgoorlie. We had so yeah. many friends and family that were like, we're not coming to the Outback. We're, no. not, we're not coming there. And the, the truth of it is, like, there's, you see the, that character or, or that John Jarrett played, he's everywhere in Australia. There's guys that look like him yeah. everywhere you go and you're like, whoa. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's part of the package that <laughs> oh, it gives yeah. it a bit of edge. Um, <laughs> And the wildlife as well, you know, like everybody thinking everything wants to kill you. Yeah, and that's true. I yeah. remember me and Johnny, my husband, wouldn't go outside without our <laughs> flip-flops on when we first moved to Kalgoorlie. We wouldn't leave our shoes outside and really paranoid about and it. But, um, yeah, maybe it gives us a bit of edge. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. And it, all it does is make the people that, that come here, they really want to come here. So yeah. I, think, I think it's just like a, a vetting process. <laughs> so if you're afraid of the grass... Then maybe don't come. Or drop bears. Yeah, or drop bears. <laughs> oh, there's always another one that when we're doing the Whit Sundays cruises, 
Kangawalla foxes, the guy was telling <laughs> these tourists, he goes, mate, you've got to watch out for these Kangawalla foxes. They're ferocious. They come out of the bush. They usually bite you straight through the knees. So then you <laughs> fall down. And then once you're on the ground, that's when they really attack. I was laughing. It's so good. Who, who are some of the content creators? Um, obviously, you see you get so much content um, tagged uh, through Australian Golden Outback and stuff like that. How, how much... Oh, that'd be an interesting thing. How much content is, is sent to you guys on a weekly or monthly basis? What's the sort of imagery that gets tagged with your tags? Um, lots. I'd probably say like 20 a day, roughly, yep. getting tagged with the Golden Outback um, hashtag or with actually tagging us in the image. Yeah, quite a bit. Yep, that's good. And what would it take to get featured on your page? Um, it's probably a combination of things. So something that really stands out so if we get we get tagged in so many things you know if we see something that actually makes us go wow I've never seen that from that perspective before or I haven't seen that location shot before um that always works you know something that would stop us in our tracks we know would stop our audience in their tracks yeah but also it can just be things that do bring out the character of the place so something that really showcases that outback charm um or some of the local people or a wildlife experience something that's just a bit different really something that's just not like every other picture that gets posted yeah so something unique and authentic yeah definitely authentic and i think when they are accompanied with a story that always gets my attention more as well because I love hearing what that person has to say about that place and what they might have loved or that they've experienced because quite often it's things that we've not thought about before um and just to hear the first person talking about how much they've loved something or how they found it we actually sometimes just use those captions as is like we yep. just use a user generated content caption because we feel like that person has kind of summed up what it's actually yeah. like better than we could and we just want to champion their experience really for people oh that's awesome we're going to have a look at the last image that you brought through oh this is so cute <laughs> for those of you that uh, aren't watching on the youtube channel we've got a, a, a leading lines of a, of a sand track or of a, or of a sandy road heading off into um, oblivion and there's a, a big mama emu on the right and we've got five little chicks following along on the left hand side tell us about this image so this is a good example, I suppose, of how content also takes us by surprise sometimes. This is taken by a photographer. Um, it's actually a family that are traveling around Australia and he also takes images along the way uh, called Off the Tracks. And they tagged us in this image and we, we loved it. But it just went mad on social. Like people just absolutely loved this image. I think it got reached about 100,000 people and got wow. 10,000 engagements within 12 hours or something like organically oh, right. it just amazing. went crazy and we were we've got like an internal work chat thing and you know we're all like have you seen that emu post like it's going mad um but it just shows that sometimes it doesn't have to be your really epic drone shot yeah. or a really like wow landscape image it can just be something that's quirky shows something that people don't often see and obviously wildlife and little baby chicks yeah, you can't really go, can you wrong. go wrong um but it gave us an opportunity to actually talk about this destination as well so this is the holland track which goes from kind of cool Gardy back through to perth through the wheat belt yep. it's a four-wheel drive oh, wow. adventure but it gave us a chance to actually talk about that experience and promote that to people um without just showing you know a four-wheel drive going down a track it was actually just a different way to promote it uh, yeah, so it just goes to show that sometimes it is just those little quirky moments um, yep. that people really connect with and really yeah. love. Well, I guess that answers the question I asked about whether you've had some images that really go viral. That's huge engagement for for um, a single image. is is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So that's a really cute one. So wildlife always ticks the boxes, to be honest. Yep. That's just, people always want to see Aussie wildlife. Um, and that's just super cute when you've got babies in there as well. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Can't go wrong. Is there any any, any accounts, uh, whether they're business accounts or content creators, that you really admire the work of, that you sort of follow yourself and think, this guy, this guy is, or guy or girl is just creating beautiful content all the time? Um, do you know what? There's so many that I, I can't even think of ones to, to, to talk about really. Yep. Um, in terms of tourism accounts... I do always love the stuff that Tourism Tasmania do and that, and that they create and that they share. I think that's really great. Um, we talked about Jared, who I think his content is amazing. Yep. I also um, really like Mark Fitz's work and we've worked with him in the past and his stuff's really beautiful. He's always like your dose of vitamin yeah. C, as they say, yeah. like looking at all his ocean shots that are really beautiful. Um, but I suppose just looking at different travel destination marketers and seeing what they're doing, and that's often how I find new influ uh, new influencers or photographers to work with, like yep. who's being featured on those channels and who's creating good stuff. Yeah. Um, 
there's a company down that are kind of based in between Perth and Esperance that I've been speaking to recently called Ascend Films and they do some really incredible quite long form videos more like three minutes um yep. for agriculture clients so for like farming oh, that's clients. interesting yeah um but it's all set to like really epic music and it's just really stunning stuff um so finding new people like that that are kind of looking to maybe work in tourism haven't done so in the past but you know that they could create something that's really different and yeah. unique is always cool like it's always nice to find someone new to work with and who can put a different spin on things i suppose as well awesome all right, mate. Well, that's um, all I've really got to, to chat about. I want to thank you so much for coming in. It's been a real pleasure and um, you've given us some great insights into your business and into workings of social media. So I'm sure that our listeners and that are going to get some real value out of that. So appreciate that. And we look forward to following along on the journeys of your accounts and um, hopefully contributing some content. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right, guys, that's a wrap. We will be putting the links down in the comment section. If you do like what you're watching, please subscribe to our YouTube channel hit the notification button and leave a comment. And if there's anyone that you'd like to see on the podcast, please write their name in the comments and we'll see if we can get them on the show.